We're here at Sunny Funny. We wanted to come by and look at Jabiru because, well, there's been some sparks going on over in Australia. I'm Dan Johnson. I'm talking to Pete Karate, who knows about the sparks. And then you got some great news for us as well. So first, tell me about this battle that's been going on between uh, CASA, which is, I guess, the Australian FAA, right. and and Jabiru, and, and, and these problems that they allege that don't seem to be all that real to me. Well, almost two years ago, um Somebody in CASA um, dumped a bunch of data on them showing 43 engine malfunctions in Jabber airplanes in the previous 12 months. Well, that would be a lot if it were right. Right. Uh, so what CASA did was immediately, without allowing only five days for a comment period, <laughs> and... Um, Without analyzing the data at all, they put some limitations on Jabiru powered airplanes in Australia. So now, CASA has been resisting the release of this data. And finally, after almost two years, through some freedom of information uh, inquiries, we now have a look at the data. Uh, 43 instances of what they called engine malfunctions. Yeah, I think they called them in-flight shutdowns, right? Yes. Was that it? Yes. So IFSD, they, they love their abbreviations like ours do. But mm -hmm. anyway, tell me more about that. Well, one of them was a call from a pilot to air traffic control because he was lost. They call that, that an in-flight shutdown? Yes, they called that an engine malfunction. Well, that's a bit flight. of a stretch. Yeah. You had uh, five or six instances of fuel exhaustion. The guys ran out of fuel. They had a couple instances. Well, that will cause the engine to stop. It but, did. Uh, it did. They but you can couple. hardly call that a fault of the engine. Yeah, they had a couple of instances of fuel starvation because fuel filters hadn't been serviced when they issues. were supposed to be. They had uh, about eight instances of oil lines breaking, again, because they hadn't been replaced at 500 hours according to the maintenance schedule with the airplane. And there were a number of others boiled down to the fact that there were eight in-flight engine failures. So 40-some came down to eight. Yes. Okay. Uh, and there were four more appropriately classed as engine malfunctions that were discovered on the ground. So eight in the air, another four, 12 total. Okay. And this is out of a fleet of 1,800 airplanes in Australia, of which five, uh, 400 of them are in flight schools. Wow, 400 airplanes in flight schools. That's yeah. an interesting data well, point right there. Another interesting part of it was the vast majority of these uh, problems came in a group of eight flight schools southwest of Sydney that used the same maintenance company to maintain <laughs> oh, the airplanes. Really? So the result of this finally, uh, CASA has not yet lifted the limitations, although now they're being uh, investigated by parliament because of this. <laughs> Uh, I'm told this goes back to a long-term feud between the owner of Jabiru and one of the higher-ups in CASA. Yeah, really. Uh, and anyway, it's a, a prime example of some unprincipled, unprofessional government contact, conduct. Um, <clears throat> you know, as much as we... Well, and kind of making a mountain out of a molehill, it sounds like, to use a familiar metaphor but it sounds well, like okay fine there were some problems there's some problems with any engine brand at some yeah, some time or another I, but nothing like the deluge they were speaking of i honestly think that if casa had granted the usual 60-day comment period before they took action then and allowed this data to be analyzed there never would have been any action ah i see okay but uh casa was uh, in turmoil at that time because Parliament had uh, been investigating them for a year and issued a report that was highly critical of CASA, forced the top two guys to resign. Is that right? Wow. Yeah. So uh, during the time when it had no leadership, uh, this uh, that's when this all this came data out. Data huh? was dumped in there, and uh, uh, they were given a five-day comment period from other and you know the RAA in Australia, which regulates the light airplanes 
they commented strongly that this was bogus. Is that right? Yeah, they did. So this and is a recreational aircraft uh, uh, of Recre Australia, yeah, right? A recreational aircraft Australia. And they and have their kind of a government sanctioned organization that yes, handles some of this? Yes, delegated the uh, regulation and oversight of light aircraft, 600 kilogram and, and lower. Oh, okay. About 30 years ago to RAA. Oh, wow. So RAA, no government funding. <clears throat> Is that right? Uh, each owner of a, a light aircraft pays so many dollars a year for the privilege of having RAA oversee their operations, and each ultralight pilot, as they call it, also pays you know a hundred some dollars a year. Uh, and that's what funds this all. Though. No taxpayer dollars, no all taxpayer user paid, dollars. basically. Yes. I think that's kind of cool, actually, that they can support themselves that way. Okay, well, you know, we don't want to stick on that, but I'm glad to let you be able to identify that for people that may have just read the top part and didn't get the rest of the story. So good stuff. But let's go to the engine itself now, Pete. You've got some new stuff coming. Tell us about that. Yeah, we do. Jabra has been working on a new engine design uh, that incorporates some cast aluminum cylinders and heads. You know, over the years, Jabru has been uh, carving their heads out of aluminum billet with a CNC machine and making their cylinder barrels out of 4140 steel, again, on a CNC machine. And that was really beneficial in the early days when they were making so many changes oh, and improvements to the engine. They didn't have big setup fees like you would for casting. Uh, if you want to make a change, you changed a few lines of uh, computer uh, code in the uh, CNC machine and you had a different part. More metal here, less metal there. Sure. Worked very well, but now the engine's been very stable the last couple of years, and I think Jabru has what they want, what they need. So now the it's more economical to use the castings. If you're going to repeat yes, over and over. if you're not going to change your design frequently. So the uh, couple of advantages to the aluminum, uh, cast aluminum, uh, number one, it doesn't corrode, uh, and that's been one of our issues with airplanes that don't fly much. These 4140 steel barrels will rust, uh, so the cast aluminum barrels will have a um, ceramic, like a Nikasil type coating on them, which is used extensively right. all over the world. Uh, and the heads uh, will be cast aluminum, and the cast aluminum is tolerant of higher cylinder head temperatures. So, uh, and also they are lighter, lighter than the steel barrels. Is that right? They're I would, yes. Somehow I would think that would be the other way around, but the cast ones are lighter. And they are lighter. All right. Well, lo lessening so, weight is always valuable. So the engine, um, I'm told, will be a bit lighter than the current engines. And I haven't seen any pricing yet, but I'm told they might be a little bit more affordable. Wow, really? You've uh, already got one probably, of the most affordable engines in, yeah, the, in the fleet. Probably not so. a whole lot, but... Uh, well, at least it's not going yeah. up, so that's good right. with these changes. Right. Now, And how are you going to identify those? We know you, what well, we're looking at here is a six-cylinder, so I know that's your 3300. Yeah, yeah, we have currently a 3300 engine and a 2200 engine. Six uh, and four cylinders, six and respectively. Four cylinder. And the power new, is uh, 120 and 80? Yeah, it? the four cylinders, 85 horse, 85. and the six cylinders rated 120 horse. Okay. Uh, the new engines will be called the 2210 ah, okay. and the 3310. And the power uh, will stay the power same? power will stay the same. And the bottom end of the engine, the crankcase, camshaft, crankshaft, will remain the same. That's always been a strong point with Jabru. The, our bottom ends are bulletproof. They last forever. Uh, so the, uh, the top end cylinders and heads will be considerably different. The intake system will also be different. Okay. And that's going to be the, the new cast uh, components then. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. I hope When will we the... see those? I was just going to... Well... took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> uh, they've been promising I would have one for Sun and Fun, but they didn't make that. Okay. They're not going to release the engines until they have two of them that have 1,000 hours of flight time each. Well, that sounds and good. So one of them has uh, 1,200 hours now, and the other one is over 800. So... Uh, I'm now promised that I will have one to display at Oshkosh. Okay, great. Well, we'll come and look at that. And speaking of Oshkosh and looking just beyond the uh, the engine here, I see the J170D. Now, we know about this from 
years past, mm -hmm. but there's a difference in it right now, right? Yeah, we when we were building the Jabiru's in Tennessee, one of the models we built was the J170, 170 SP. Ah, okay, now, I remember that. The J230D, or the 170D, I mean, has uh, undergone considerably more testing and spin testing. Uh, Jabru developed a different har uh, vertical tail that is much thicker, more swept, and an airfoil shaped rather than the flat sided yeah, tail. Yeah, the other one was just basically yeah, a flat a component. Slab. And this yeah. now has that uh, curvature yeah. to it. Uh, the previous airplanes required a fair amount of rudder to coordinate the turns. These require none. I'm still trying to unlearn my feet <laughs> after uh, close to 3,000 hours in Jabru's. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. But that's the uh, thing that a new user is just going to like right away and won't know that history. Right. Right. Yep. So that so sounds good. So we're going to so. introduce it. Uh, we have six of these in flight schools that are really doing well. In fact, uh, Hummingbird Aviation in Minneapolis uh, just has theirs down right now for a 2,000 hour overhaul. Uh, they bought a second one uh, and they're thinking of buying a third one. Is that right? So they're making uh, good use. Of, this yes. is all the 170 now. All the 170. So just to put that in perspective, the uh, the two thirties that you referenced, it's still a two seater, but it's got that cavernous open space right. behind you. That That's a larger airplane. Yeah, this that, is a smaller one, yeah, right? That, the the two thirty was based on Jabru's four place airplane, uh, without the back seats in it. The one seventy is based on Jabru's UL model, and they took the fuselage and sliced it each way and expanded it, expanded it in every direction. Uh, the cabin is actually wider than the 230s. Is that right? There's oh, more wow. leg room for the pilot. Uh, there just isn't a back door or there is a luggage area that will hold 70 pounds. But uh, Well, that's still plenty. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. assume then no third door like on the J230s. No, yeah, no third door. Uh, and it will be powered with the four-cylinder engine, the 2200 engine. So it's going to cruise uh, between 100 and 105 knots on four gallons an hour. Wow. And it's got the same wing, same landing gear, same horizontal tail as the J230. Oh, it does. Okay. So uh, there's some common components there, and it's a tough little airplane. That's that's why it's so successful in flight schools. Yeah, flight schools are pretty hard users of airplanes. And if they are doing a 2,000-hour uh, overhaul on it, well, that means mm -hmm. they've been flying it quite a bit to get to that point. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good yeah, stuff. They, they bought it new and uh, in six years, 2,000 hours. All right. Well, a lot of great stuff. We'll be looking for the 3310, the 2210 at Oshkosh, and we'll see the J170D at Oshkosh. That's our plan. Uh, you know, we have, since this is a new model, we have to go through. Ah, yes, yeah, right. Get an R&D permit first from the FAA and then uh, submit more paperwork, get it inspected. We expect the arrival of the airplane sometime in late june so we'll have about <laughs> you're three gonna be weeks, racing yeah <laughs> three weeks to uh, so if the faa uh, doesn't hold us up uh, if if they're available and for inspections when we need them we'll be at oshkosh all right well for those that won't go to oshkosh and in case that doesn't happen quite that way for people that want more information you've got a little change in the name now it used to be jabberu us so give mm -hmm. us your web address now and the name of the new company or the, well, the change name of the company i should say the company uh, we reorganized and the company is now jabberu north america llc uh, we split off the service end of it and that's my son's company now called sport aircraft services llc and he does all of the maintenance, rebuilds, engine overhauls, uh, upgrades, and so forth. And Jabru North America, we sell airplanes, engines, firewall forward kits, and parts. Okay. Uh, that so way give I, us both addresses then. One for the, Let's do the okay. airplane company first, where you go to buy and learn more about the engines and so forth. Okay. The uh, Jabru North America is www.jabaroona.com. Okay. All right. And the and services then, company? And uh, the services company is Sport Aircraft Services. So the website is www.sportaircraftservices.com. Sounds pretty good. We'll look for more there. Uh, there's lots of information about all the Jabaroo products, the ones that I've flown, the engines, lots of that, and other videos. You can find all that and lots more affordable aviation on bydanjohnson.com. 
Thanks for joining Pete Karate and myself here at Sun and Fun. Yeah, thank you, Dan.